Good day to you and welcome to another Paddox Club video tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about sectional title, trustee decision making. Let's first look at the issue of quorum. At a meeting of trustees in terms of prescribed management rule 16, you need 50% of the number of trustees to be present and this must not be less than two. Without this number, you can't have a meeting. That's the quorum requirement. Then let's look at voting rights at a physical meeting. In terms of prescribed management rule 18, you know that the trustees elect a chairperson and that chairperson has a casting vote as well as a deliberative vote. So if a matter comes up for decision in the ordinary course, each of the trustees, including the trustee uh, who happens to be the chairperson, has a deliberative vote. But if in fact there is a tie, if there is no decision when the deliberative votes are counted, then in addition the chairperson has a casting vote to break that tie. In terms of prescribed management rule 22, all matters must be determined by a majority of the votes of the trustees, taking into account that casting vote, which is, is cast by the chairperson if necessary. A trustee is not entitled to vote if he has an interest in any litigation or contract with the body corporate. So it might be that the body corporate is suing the trustee or vice versa, but in addition, if there's any talk of a, or voting on a contract in which that um, person has a direct or indirect uh, interest, then he simply is not able to vote. If we go outside of the physical meeting context and into the process for trustee decision making without a meeting, we look at prescribed management rule 24. And if all the trustees who are in the Republic at any given time sign a particular document, a resolution, and also they are in number not less than are sufficient to form a quorum, which we've already looked at, then that decision is as effective as if it had been passed at a proper trustee meeting. So it's a second way of making decisions. And this is something that can be done digitally um, and managed over the internet. If you look at the situation once a decision has been made, the trustees are obliged to keep minutes. Now, if they've taken it in writing, well, that is the evidence. But if they sat at a meeting and made a decision, they've got to write it down. They've got to write down the text of that resolution, and they've got to keep the minute books, including the text of all their decisions, in perpetuity. If any bondholder or owner in writing asks for a copy, they've got to supply it. They've got to make it available for inspection by that person. So you can get all the minutes, but also it's not unusual to ask for a certified extract from the minutes. So, for example, rather than getting the minutes, which would be logically approved at the next meeting of that same body, the, the trustees, you can also, um, for the purposes of proving some decision to a bank or some other extrinsic party, you can get a certified copy. In that case, what will happen is the text will be put on a piece of paper with a suitable heading and two trustees will certify that 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 particular decision was in fact taken at a particular um, uh, meeting in terms of the minutes. Thank you for joining me in this um, discussion forum. Here is the place to talk about any questions that you have arising from this video tutorial.